Okay, good morning. I want to welcome everybody to Capitalizing on Critical Care this morning. Actually, this is one of the best webinars I think we have of any of them because it's exciting. You know, I don't really don't care how many agents I have on these calls. I go, you know what, whoever's there is going to call me afterwards and say, you know what, thanks, Mark, because I made a lot of money off of this deal. This Capitalizing on Critical Care, I assume that at this point in time you've known enough about the product or you know enough about the product to make you dangerous. This is going to talk about the marketing plan that's going to go with it. Before I get started, know that everybody that attends this webinar will get at least 100 Golden Care Reward Points, and one of you will receive 500 Reward Points. This is our thank you for taking time out of your schedule to attend one of our webinars, and I hope that you take advantage of these points because I'll tell you what, they're neat. This is a great rewards program. Okay, let's just start out a little bit here this morning by just kind of talking about critical care. First of all, note that the power of critical care is very easy. Number one, it's got a better trigger than long-term care has. You know, when you go with the diagnosis trigger versus ADLs, it means that you're going to pay a lot more claims. You get a lot of cancer patients out there that they can still perform all the activities of daily living. They might not qualify for a long-term care claim until the very late stages where critical care is going to pay up front. It's going to pay the benefits regardless of recovery or death. If you've got a 24-month benefit period and your client has a stroke, we start paying the 24 months, and four months later, he recovers totally. We're still going to pay the balance of the 24 months. If four months later, instead of recovering, he dies, his family is going to get a check for the remainder of the benefits. That's a cool concept here when you think about it. The built-in restoration of benefits is really strong. Actually, this policy will pay the full monthly benefit, which means the if you sell $3,000 policy, it'll pay six grand a month for the 24 months, and then 12 months later, restore it and pay it all again. And it will pay it up to three times if you have the full board claim there. That's big. It picks up all the major risks there. The base covers the home health care. You've got increased benefits for assisted living, nursing home. More importantly, your clients can qualify for the coverage. There's no APS, there's no height and weight, there's no cognitive, there's no telephone interview. You know, so far we've been issuing 98% of the applications coming in on LTCID clients. So if your client's healthy enough to at least apply for long-term care insurance, they're healthy enough that we're going to issue it, and so far our average issue time is three days. You know, when you look at this, there's agents out there that are starting to come back and say, you know what? This is almost a better policy than long-term care insurance. Now, I'm not willing to go that far, okay? I believe in long-term care insurance, and we're a great long-term care insurance agency. But I'll tell you what, I think it's the best alternative available for your declines and uninsurable clients out there. So let's start recognizing right away the power. We're not backing off here and giving the client a weaker plan. We're actually giving the client a plan that's as acceptable to them as long-term care because it's going to pay more claims, although that's traded off by the fact that it won't pay the same number, the same type of claims all the way around when long-term care will pay. So that's a trade-off, but it's a pretty good trade-off when you consider. My studies have shown that critical care, on average, will pay more claims than a long-term care insurance policy will. So let's take a look at critical care, recognizing what it is, it's a solution for your declines. It's somewhere to go with your declines to know that you can get them covered. So how do we make some money? Well, the first thing, let's start making some money off your old declines. You know what? I don't care how old the decline is. If you are out in the field, you submitted an app for a client, and they got declined, that's eating at them out there. Okay? I don't care if you even left them on a little bit of bad terms. The fact of the matter is, you created the urgency in their mind. You created the need in their mind. You got them excited about the coverage. And then you sent in an application and they couldn't get the coverage. I don't care if that's four or five years ago. That still is eating at them out there. And the bottom line is, is they're waiting for you to come back and offer them a legitimate alternative. So the first thing we have to recognize, the first usage of critical care is right there for those old declines. I don't care how old they are. Secondly, uninsurable spouses or clients out there. Again, older doesn't equal weaker. The fact is, is that when I found out I couldn't get any more life insurance five years ago, 
I put the word out that I'd buy almost anybody that would accept me out there, and I still will today. I know I need more life insurance, and I know that I need a company that's willing to accept me. And that means I might have to take a little bit weaker policy, but I'm willing to do that. So don't worry about how old they are. If you can remember them and you know that they were uninsurable or they couldn't get long-term care for another reason out there, they're a prospect and they're a good prospect out there. So the first thing that means is let's figure out how to go get some money from them. The form that you're going to use if you're going to allow Golden Care to handle the follow-ups on your clients is right here. Okay, This form is how we get by HIPAA. So if you're going to go out, remember you've got two options when you're marketing critical care out there. Number one, you can write it yourself. Or number two, if you don't want to, you know what? Our agents will write it for you. And we'll still pay you first year commissions. We'll still pay you renewal commissions. The difference is, is you'll get receive those commissions on 40% of the premium instead of 100% if you write them yourself. If you're going to use Golden Care, this is the form that you're going to give to your clients that they have to fill out and send in to us to make sure that we satisfy HIPAA requirements. You can use them in your own mailings, but you probably don't need to, okay? The first decision that you got to make then is how are you going to do critical care? Are you going to have golden care follow-up? Or are you going to do it yourself? And always remember one thing, it doesn't matter to us, okay? As long as you do it, that's all we care about. We'd well prefer to have the agents out there making the commission themselves. But what we're telling you is that if you don't want to, we're willing to do it for you. And I'll tell you what, we don't even care if you cherry pick on it. Cherry pick meaning that if you know some of the people that have been declined and you want to call them and write them yourselves, do it. Then give us the rest of them. We just want to make sure that your clients are being followed up on and make sure they get the opportunity to look at this product and see if it's something that they might want to use. So. Always remember, before we go any farther, that those decline clients you have are valuable. Make sure you always remember that. Don't in your mind write these people off saying that they had no value to you whatsoever because you couldn't get them coverage. Why? Number one, they've already shown that they trust you out there. They've already shown you they like you. You know, they've proven that. They bought from you. So they've already proven that they like and they trust you. And when you couldn't help them, they were disappointed. But the fact is, they're not mad at you, okay? They know they need it, they know the urgency, and they're just waiting for you to come back and help them. So the bottom line, I don't care if it's been three, four years, when you contact them again, there's a great chance they're going to embrace you. So first thing you got to do is put together your list, okay? If you want to know who you've had declined in the last four or five years, go to the insurance company. Ask them to provide you a list of all the declines. If we are your uh, contractor for all your companies, go call up your regional director, ask them for this. We'll give you a spreadsheet that has all the names, addresses, phone numbers, the whole package. For your uninsurables, go back through your suitability forms. Now, I know for the past 10 years, I've harped to agents. Use the suitability form. Keep them on file. They're going to be invaluable to you in the future, which means probably one out of 10 agents did it. So if you're one of the 10, great, you just got a gold mine right there in your pile. Go through them and uh, pick out the uninsurables. If you're one of them that didn't do it, go back through your appointment books. Try to jog your memory on appointments that you were on that you had an uninsurable prospect or two. Okay? Remember that we know from lead cards one thing. Okay? It doesn't matter how old they are. It doesn't matter what time of the day you call them. Don't prejudge anybody. Don't try to read their mind, okay? Just put them on the list, okay? Don't sit there and look through your cards or your point and say, well, he'd never buy something like this. That's not your job to prejudge people. It's the client's job to make the decision. So don't prejudge them. Get them on the list so we can get a mailer out to them. Now, for the mailer, you got a couple of choices here. You can use a mailer that we provide to you that either has the agent, you the agent following up on, or us following up on. If you order the direct mail kit, you'll see that there's three copies of each mailer. One if you're going to follow up yourself, one if we're going to follow up for you, and one that's called a simple format. 
a simple format is going to be simply a format that says you don't have to worry about mail merging or going in there and putting in the name and address. Just print it, send it out. Okay. Make sure you understand if you need help in this area. Call on your kids. Call on your next door neighbor. Any college students around? I apologize for that. I'm sorry. Okay. Go to your kids, next door neighbors, any college students you have around, anybody out there that you can just tap for a little while to help you get this thing out. Okay. The next thing that you want to look at here is a real simple way to increase your return here, and that is make a phone call. Pick up the phone and give them a call and say, hey, I'm mailing out a letter with an alternative to long-term care insurance. Take a look at it, and if you're interested, fill out that form and send it in. You know, that just makes sure they're not going to throw it in the garbage. The bottom line is if we get a lead card back in, whether you do it yourself or whether we do it, we're going to see about a 50% closing ratio, okay? Actually above that. So all that matters is how many leads we get coming in. If that phone call might double your response out there, what's wrong with doubling your response? It's going to increase your income a lot out there. So if you think about it, that phone call right there might be one of the most valuable phone calls you make compared to what else are you going to have to call on, okay? So choose your mail piece. Make, think about it in your mind, maybe a way to increase that income out there. If you look at each mail piece, you'll notice that there are instructions right on the top. This is a letter that's to be sent to past declines or uninsurable prospects who haven't ever heard about critical care and you, the agent, are going to handle the follow-up. If here it says Golden Care is going to handle the follow-up, it will be easy to see, okay? Here's what you need to put in the envelope. Here's what you need to mail out, et cetera. The letter is a very simple letter. You're sending out to clients saying, hey, I got very good news. There's finally a product that can help people that have had troubles getting approved for long-term care insurance. This is a huge relief for me because I know how important it is to try to get you coverage. I can't guarantee you that you're going to get covered, but I'll tell you what, go ahead and fill out this card or give me a call and let's talk about it. Now, when you are following up, you can do a mail merge right up here. You see these little uh, symbols up here? That's what they do when they do a mail merge with the spreadsheet to make sure you don't have to spend the time typing out each name. Or the simple version that's included doesn't require any type of a merge. If we're looking at a situation that Golden Care is going to follow up on, you'll notice the only difference is it says I'm all set up with the organization that created this new coverage. As soon as they process the information, a specialist will contact you and let you know about your potentials and protection options, et cetera. Again, both concepts here, you can use a mail merge or a simple version. So we've tried to make this as turnkey for you as possible to make this a simple, easy thing for you to do. Now, if you want to generate a higher response on the ones that you're going to mail out and follow up with yourself, include a quote for about the same premium with the letter you're sending out. You know, or pick up a lowball quote. I'd like, what I'd do is I'd fill out a good lowball quote, throw it in there. I'm going to get that additional percentage of people that'll return that wouldn't return based on a normal one out there. Okay, make sure you think about the fact of picking up that phone again. You know, when I look at the phone and I think about phone calling, I always say, I want to see what my return is on dollar-wise for every call I make. Whether it's a lead card, whether it's following up with old prospects, et cetera. I learned a long time ago that it's a lot more valuable to call a lead card than it is to call somebody that has said, I want to think it over. So I learn and I make sure, I try to make sure my uh, phone calls result in the highest profit potential. You know what? If you pick up that phone again here, this might be the highest dollar return call that you can ever make out there. This is that good of a product and that easy of a product to sell out there. So think about picking up that phone again because I'll tell you what, it'll make a lot of difference. Do me a favor, okay? Don't put this off. You know, if you're out in the sale and you get all done creating a need with the client, do you finish up by saying, you know something, I think you should think about this for a week or two before you do anything. Or I think you should put this aside for a month or two. No. You know what? If you do that, you know what's going to happen. 
and that is they're not going to buy it. We know clients want to procrastinate. We know they will if we don't let them. And we tell them very bluntly, if you don't do this now, you're not ever going to do it. So the same thing applies here. I don't care how busy you are, okay? If you're going to do this, do it now. Don't sit there three months from now and realize you lost money because you didn't take action. Because I look at right now and realize you've got a real hot opportunity here. You know, I know it's uncomfortable because I know, I don't care how long you've been in business, it's hard to get used to a new product. No agent's comfortable with it till they sold a few of them, they've got the apps filled out, etc. So what's the best way to overcome that? Go sell one right away. Pick up the phone and call somebody you know that's pretty close to you that's uninsurable for long-term care insurance. Go over, pitch them on the product, and write up the app, okay? You know what? It's going to help you overcome some of the comfort issues. It's going to show you how easy it is to go out there and sell this product. So understand one thing. I know what you're thinking in your mind. I know what's going to happen to you when you get done with this call. It's normal. That's what the insurance business has happened to all the time. So don't let it happen to you. Go get over it. Go out there and start making some money with this product. Going forward with new prospects, okay, make sure, first of all, you realize setting appointments now is going to be easy. You know, a lot of people, and we don't in our agency, but a lot of people, when they're on the phone setting appointments, they pre-qualify prospects. Now, if you're pre-qualifying your prospect uh, health-wise, the words you hate to hear is a client says, well, I've already been declined for long-term care insurance. Because all of a sudden, you're going, you're buying great. I don't have nothing happening with this client. Okay, who are you declined by? Well, Genworth. Then Pentreaty declined me. Well, a pretty good sign they're not going to get insurance, right? Especially Pentreaty. No, I'm kidding about Pentreaty. They've been gone a long time. But all of a sudden, that person that's been saying, I've been declined, and you in your mind thinking you got no appointment, becomes the hottest appointment you're ever going to get. Because I'm going to ask that client, and say, oh, you've already been declined, huh? Let me ask you a question. If I could get you a company that would accept you, would you be interested? You'd be surprised how many people are going to say, yeah. Yeah, come on out and show it to me. Or you get that person that says, I'm not sure I can get long-term care insurance. You know, if they're even telling you that in the phone, you know what they're telling you? Is they're saying, tell me, please, God, that you can get me coverage. Because everybody I've talked to so far has said I can't get long-term care insurance. So they're just waiting for somebody to tell them that they can get them coverage. All of a sudden, when you're on the phone, these two types of answers, which you've hated in the past, are all of a sudden going to be answers you'd love to hear. And I'll tell you what, all of a sudden, you're going to find yourself increasing your appointments by 25, 50, 75, 100% or more per week. And you know what? Appointments are the key out there, right? And I remember my boss, and I'll tell you what, he was an old-fashioned agent, but he said, count your pitches and count your dollars, you know. That's the bottom line out there in insurance. The more appointments you have, the more money you're going to make. That's all there is to it. So you know what, if you can increase that number of appointments you know, that's definitely going to help you out in the long run there. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to help you set the appointments. When you get to the appointment, if you set it based on a decline, go directly to the critical care presentation. Order the presentation from me. We've got a great presentation. I'm actually going to send you two of them, okay? One presentation is just for a normal critical care sale and one's for a client who has been turned out to long-term care insurance or doesn't think you can get it. If you're going out there on a normal long-term care sale, then go out there with your normal long-term care sale and be prepared to pivot early. Now, everybody uses some types of pre need questions before they give a presentation. I'm just going to show you my uh, suitability form that I designed. If you want to use this one, you can order it directly from the supply department. But listen how I'm doing this very carefully because it will really help you increase your sales. Before we get into a presentation, we walk out to most appointments cold. We have no clue what's going on with the client. We're walking into that house just knowing I got a lead card and I'm here to talk to you. So before we get started, we always start out saying, just so I don't bore you with stuff you already know, do you mind if we ask you a few questions? And I'm going to find out who they have their health insurance or Medicare with, okay? 
Then I'm going to get a five-year medical history. Dad, when's the last time you got went to the hospital, et cetera? I'm going to do this telling them right up front, long-term care insurance is hard to get. So before I waste a lot of your time and my time, we better check you out and see if you're insurable. Now, if in this five-year medical history and the prescription drugs, I find out that my client isn't insurable for long-term care insurance, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to get into the next set of questions, which is basically a set of questions for advanced agents that helps you find premium, okay? But for normal agents out there, here's the whole key to this question is you start out saying, do you have any other health insurance? Did you ever buy cancer insurance or anything like that? No? Great. Who do you have your long-term care insurance with? Make sure you word it that way. Who do you have it with? Now we're expecting them to say, well, we don't have any. And when they do, I say, gee, most time by the time people reach your age, they've already at least looked at it. Have you looked at coverage? Well, yeah, we had an agent come out here a month or two ago. Oh, what company were they with? Oh, that's a pretty good company. How come you didn't buy it? You'd be amazed at what you'll find out by asking that simple question. How come you didn't buy it? Because all of a sudden you get an answer and it's going to tell you exactly how they feel about long-term care insurance. Why aren't they interested? Why are they interested? What was the problem that they had? You know, you'd be amazed how many times right there they go, well, it was way too expensive. And I'll say it was, huh? How much did that agent say it was going to be? Well, he said it was going to be 500 bucks a month. Well, I learned something, didn't I? What did I learn? Don't quote them 500 bucks a month. I might not make a sale here either, right? So what I'm going to look, try to learn here is why haven't they bought or what's their feelings as a whole? And then in 5, 6, 7, and 8, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to get their opinions about long-term care. First of all, you know anybody that's been in a nursing home for a long period of time? Yeah, who was that? Your mom? How long was she in there? Why'd she go in? Who paid? You know, if you need long-term care tomorrow, what would you do? You know, have you ever talked about it with your kids? How would you want them to be involved with your care? Now, I have to tell you something. I could make an entire sale based on this uh, form right here. By the time I got to question number eight, I'd be ready to go in there and make a recommendation and close. But you don't necessarily want this to make the sale for you. You want it to give you an opinion of what's going on. If you know that you have a client here that doesn't qualify for long-term care insurance, I want to establish the need right here. If I don't have a client that, uh, or excuse me, I have a client that will qualify for long-term care insurance, I'm going to get this information to use it in my presentation. So when I get to the end of this, I'll automatically say, you know what, based on this information, I think long-term care insurance is something you should look at. Would you mind if I proceed? And boom, I'll start into my presentation. Okay. If they don't qualify for long-term care insurance, create that need with the pre-questions and then pivot right away. Just say, here's the deal. At your, with your medical situation here, I don't think you guys qualify for long-term care insurance. However, I have an alternative product that most of my clients, once they see it, say, oh, my mind, that's as good as long-term care insurance. Let me show you what this product does, and I'll pivot right away. If I don't think I created the need good enough, I might continue on with long-term care presentation just through the need generation part of it. If I see that one of them qualifies for long-term care insurance, I'm going to continue with the long-term care insurance presentation. When I hit the end, I'm going to say, okay, here's the scoop. Dad, based on your health conditions, you can't qualify for long-term care insurance. So I'm going to show you a product that's going to fit you. Mom, you do qualify for long-term care insurance, so let's start out with you. And I'll go ahead and show Mom the long-term care product, Dad the critical care, and I'll start writing them up. Okay, the bottom line is, is if I do have a long-term care insurance client here and I go through the long-term care insurance sale, when I hit the end of the sale and I'm ready for the application, I'm going to say, here's the deal. Long-term care insurance is hard to get. You know, I told you earlier that I represent all the top companies and I got to tell you something. I got a company and I'm going to reach over and pat that pile of brochures I laid out at the beginning of the presentation and say, I got a company in here that I know will take you right now. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to try to get you the best policy I can. So I'd like to submit an application here to United Omaha. They're tough though. 
And I got to tell you, honestly, there's a good chance they're going to come back, Mom, and they're going to say, we're not willing to accept you. Now, if that happens, they're going to notify you. Don't get mad at me, okay? I'll come back out here, and I'll tell you what, we'll pivot to another company here, and we'll give them a try, and I'll keep working with you until I get you with a company that's going to accept you and give you the best policy you can get. Now, on the other hand, if you get that letter two weeks from now and you start panicking and you get mad at me, okay, then I'll tell you what, tell me right now that you're going to do that, and I'll write you with the weaker policy right away, okay? What would you rather do? And I throw it right back in their court. I'm going to get their agreement. They're going to let me back in the door. Why? Because if they're not good, I'm going to pivot right now. I don't want to end up writing an application that ends up getting declined and I can't get back in the door. It doesn't make sense to me. If I can get them to the point to write up an app, I want them to write up an app and I want their business. So I want to make sure that if they're not going to let me back in the door, I might pivot to critical care right now. Okay. So set that stage for the decline and make sure you're ready for it. Now, if you do get a decline and you're going to have golden care follow-up on it, you're going to follow up yourself, you can just call them yourself. But if you're going to have golden care follow-up on it, then when they get declined, call them up and say, here's the deal. Folks, you got declined. I'm looking at my companies, and there's one company that I think will take you. I'm going to send you out a form and ask you to fill that out and put it in the envelope and return it. And then they'll contact you and they'll tell you about this coverage. And right out the door, this is going to say, hey, I'm a fan of the old adage, for every door that closes, another opens. Hopefully you recall that we talked about the fact that you might not get accepted out here. Well, here's a policy that might accept you. And the bottom line, this is all simple to do. And Golden Carol follow up. Golden Carol make the sale for you. And again, you receive the commission. You know, we want to make this as easy as possible for you to make sure that you can take full advantage of this product. And what I just showed you here today is the way to take advantage of this product to the max. All you have to do is make sure that you think about critical care and you follow the system that we've given you here today. Keep your mind open for selling opportunities. Want to know why? Let's say you're living out there, and I know, Jim, you're on the phone here today. You're sitting down there in Georgia. It's not even approved yet, and all of a sudden it gets approved tomorrow. If you're the first agent in your area to offer this, every decline in your entire community from any agent that markets long-term care insurance at all is a prospect for critical care. You know, it's not often you get a chance like this. You can get out there, and you can actually take business away from other agents quick, fast, easy, because you're offering something they can't offer. You're offering their clients a chance to get coverage. So get the word out. Get your network going out here. You know what? If they've been declined, they want coverage, and they're going to buy it from a first agent to offer it to them. In fact, if they've been declined, they're going to pick up the phone and call agents. I sold a contractor up Park Rapids a disability supplement, a long-term care policy that pays cash, you know. And a couple of weeks ago, I was up north, and all of a sudden, I had somebody drive in the driveway, and the guy gets out, introduces himself, and he says, are you the guy that sold so-and-so that policy? You know what? When people want coverage, they're willing to come to you and ask for it. Okay? So recognize the opportunity and take advantage of it. You want to double your income overnight? From now on, everybody you talk to, every appointment you run, when you get done, say, do you know anybody that's been turned down for long-term care insurance? Let me tell you what a yes means. If all of a sudden that person says yes to you, what they're saying is the person that told them that must be pretty close to them. Otherwise, why would they tell them that? They must have been concerned about the fact they were declined or they wouldn't have shared the fact in the first place. So your person you're talking to might think they're doing a favor for that other person by referring you. You know what? That's much better than a normal referral, and it's a heck of a lot easier to ask. You know, a lot of agents have trouble asking for referrals. Well, if you're one of them, try this. You know, anybody that's been turned down for long-term care insurance, every appointment do it. I don't care if you sell them or not. Heck, if I were you, I'd do it right on the phone when I'm setting appointments. You get done, whether or not you set the appointment, ask them a question. Do you know anybody that's been turned down for long-term care insurance? You know, anytime a client calls you for service in the next little while, ask them. Use your center of influences. Use your networking partners because people that are 
decline for long-term care that share it with other people want the coverage. And they're going to accept that agent that walks in there and can give it to them. Overcome objections with critical care. You get a client that sits out there and says, you know, I'm going to self-insure or I'm going to gamble. And they keep bringing this up. You know what that means? It means that they can't see themselves needing care. So I'm going to just pivot real quickly after the second or third one and say, here's the deal. Whenever a client says that to me, it normally means they don't see themselves needing long-term care in the future. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Could you see yourself having a heart attack? Oh, yeah. How about cancer? Well, God hopes no, but yeah, I can see that. You know what? I have clients that can't see themselves needing long-term care, but they can see themselves having a heart attack or cancer or something like that. And you know what? I've got a product that fits you perfectly. Let me show it to you. And I'm going to bring out critical care and present it. I'm going to key in on the fact that it's a critical illness policy, but it provides long-term care benefits. That increased benefit for the assistant living, increase for the nurse home. And you know what? When you look at critical care and you add up the odds, there's a dang good chance your client's going to need it and use it. So you can overcome these objections easily by using critical care out there. Remember one thing? There is no other alternative to long-term care insurance like this. The more I study this product, the more I look at it, the more I say, I know right now, so far, just my numbers show me that critical care will pay about 127% of the claims the long-term care policy will pay. So that means it will pay more claims in long-term care insurance. It picks up the major risks out there. It offers restoration of benefits built in. The underwriting gives people a chance to qualify. You know, there's a reason agents out there are arguing that it's better than long-term care. I'm not going to go that far. I'm not going to say that, but I will say, you know what? How could you go wrong bringing this out to the people that are declining? More importantly, would it be wrong if you didn't bring it out to your clients? If you have a client that, that, that got declined and you don't bring this out to them, are you ethically doing the best thing? Nah, I hate to leave you in a spot like that, but that is a good way to make the point to agents out there. It is, in my mind, the best alternative out there, and it's a product that you need to bring to your clients. You know, this was a quick course this morning on capitalizing crit on critical care. I'm going to open it up in a few minutes to questions. But I want you to know, if you want a copy of today's slides, go to LTC Agent Sales Tools and get that. You want a recording of this presentation, go to our training site. You want to know about our upcoming webinar, there's our agent site. You know what? We try to provide you the tools to help you go out and make money selling long-term care insurance, and today it's alternatives. And I'll tell you what, our whole scope in the insurance industry is to provide you that support. So pick up the phone, give us a call, and let us help you make money.